Hello everybody, how's it going today? So, hopefully you missed that, there was a dead rat, a flattened rat on the road, kind of nasty. So today I'd like to discuss some of my thought process when it comes to stuff like masks, because I've gotten some interesting comments regarding the mask. I'm unsubscribing since you wear the mask. You're an idiot for wearing the mask and so on and so forth. So I just like to kind of go through the type of calculations that I make as a, as a business owner in this regard. So when I got these disposable masks, they were price gouged like many other things because there was short availability of them. So there was a guy across the street who had these things available. I think it was like 30, 30 bucks for 50 masks, so like maybe 66 cents a mask or something with, you know, 60 cents a mask. I'm not great at doing math when I'm trying to make sure I don't get doored by a car on my left. But that was about the price of it. Now, the price of me being open as a business, if you take into account uh, payroll, is anywhere from like 14 to 17,000 bucks a week, depending on bonuses, who showed up, how many people I have that particular week. There's rent at 12,500 a month. There's, uh, one second, this car is not gonna let me in. Here we go, Never mind. The cars on my right get pissed off when I try to get in on the right, but I have to because there's no bike lane, because this is not a bike lane. This is actually where landlords park their car while they're waiting for, for tenants. But didn't you know that? Anyway, see, like this guy up front? Okay, that's an Uber waiting for a tenant, not a landlord. But same principle. Bike lane, bike lane. Anyway. I don't want to hear shit about how bikes don't obey traffic laws because look to your left. You're not a bike, you're not a bike, you're not a bike. So I don't want to hear no shit when I ride in the bus lane because that's my left, they ain't a fucking bicycle. But anyway. The risk reward calculation. So a mask is 60 cents a piece. Now when you add up all expenses, I am paying approximately $2,700 per day to be open as a business, right? 2,700 bucks a day, maybe. Now, at around 2,700 bucks a day, with about maybe eight to 12 people that are showing up, that comes out to about eight to $10 a day in masks. Now, if the pandemic is not as bad as people make it out to be, if the virus is not as bad as people make it out to be. Hell, I will go full conspiracy here and say, if the virus is fully fake and made up by the Illuminati, I spent less than 0.5% of my daily budget to have my store open, to have masks for every employee. If the pandemic is a terrible thing, and the virus w does have the potential to kill and harm hundreds of thousands of people, then I have protected the people that walk in, as well as the people that work here, from catching it. So even if you believe that this is a, a ridiculous virus, that the, that the mortality rates are not that bad, all this other crap, if I'm spending $2,700 a day to be open, why am I going to cheap out and then not go that last extra $6 a day so that the people that are here are not, are at a, don't lower their risk drastically for spreading the virus. It makes no sense, like not even from a, from a medical point of view, but just from a risk point of view. Like at, if I'm spending $2,700 a day to be open, the additional $6 that it costs to have a mask for each individual. That's nothing. That is a rounding error. Like, it's not even worth an argument. It's not even worth a Google search. It's not worth a brain cell at that point. So everybody at work wears it. And when I do my videos, I also wear it 
because people walk into my office. If people don't walk into my office, what if I walk outside my office? I have to get a part or I have to speak to someone. Having it on de decreases my chance, if I have it, of spreading it. Now you may say, Lewis, why would healthy people wear a mask? Well, how do you know that you're healthy? It takes two weeks before you start showing symptoms. And I can't get a test in most places because our government sucks and was fully unprepared to handle this on every level. So even if I wish to pay, it is fairly difficult to get a test. Now, some places are finally starting to get those antibody tests available, which is great. But when you see the wait time for it, it's, it, it's completely non-practical. So I have everybody at work wear a mask. And I ask that the customers that walk in also wear a mask. And if they don't have one on and I have my disposable mask thing, I'll just give one to them. Why not? It doesn't cost me anything. Except for literally the six bucks a day. Which again, if you're running a business in Manhattan, is nothing. Like legitimately nothing. Now, but the extra effort to have a folding table that is six feet away from the main table so that the customer stays between six to 12 feet away from me. What did that cost me? That cost me a folding table that I already have in a space that was unused or because I had never finished setting up a counter in the front anyway. So these little measures that I'm taking is nothing. Alcohol. So I've spent probably 140 bucks or 200 bucks total in the past few months on alcohol. I spend money on alcohol already because I use it for cleaning boards. Again, over the course of two months, $140 for more alcohol so that I can clean more surfaces with microfiber. What I do is I spray the surface, I scrub the surface. After the surface has been scrubbed, I then spray it again and I let the alcohol sit there so that it can, you know, dissolve the corona and burn the corona and kill the corona. You know, all, all that good stuff. And it costs me an additional minute or so every time a customer walks in to clean their machine, to clean the door handle and everything else. And whatever. So what? If the virus is bad, then I have saved my staff and other people they come into contact with from spreading. If the virus is not bad, over the course of a month or two, I wasted a hundred bucks. Am I gonna be that sad? Like, am I gonna really, am I really gonna like look at my bank account, look at my expense list as a business owner and think to myself, God damn it, I spent a hundred dollars on that. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. No, rounding error. Now, when it comes to the virus response, I find that, Hi, there. like just about everything else, it is a hyperpartisan, hyperpolarized issue. Where I speak to people on either side, and it's fine to find the middle. I believe in taking all those precautions. But I also have not closed. You know, I sent in my paperwork just in case the essential business classification was vague. I sent in everything. We're using the form on the governor's site. And I have been open. If someone lives with people who are elderly or immunocompromised, they are being paid to stay home. If you are not immunocompromised, do not live with the elderly or you do not believe that this virus is of a great threat to you, then you can come to work. I'm leaving that choice up to the people that work here. With the obvious caveat that if zero people come to work for the foreseeable future, that there will be no more company. This is not a threat, this is just a basic fundamental reality of business. And things were worked out accordingly. Now, on one side of the aisle, I see that there are people saying that if you reopen any time in the next six months, if any lockdown measure whatsoever is, uh, so, is uh, relaxed over the next six months, it's because you want people to die. You don't care about human life. You put profits over people. And on the other side of the aisle, I see there are people saying that this is just the flu. It's, your pro it's a fake virus to begin with. It's not really going to do any harm. Why should I even have to wear a mask? If you wear a mask, that's the sign of your own weakness. 
and succumbing to the man. You should take that mask off and not care at all. Touch your face, touch, touch your pee pee bus, touch nasty surfaces, who cares? And it really leaves me wondering, like, can we have a middle ground? Is it possible to have a middle ground? And I'm kind of wondering if the reason that we don't have a middle ground is because politicians have not necessarily been forthright with regards to the situation. At the federal level, there has been a severe lack of preparedness. We literally have a department called the USAID Predict. You can look it up. There's an interesting New York Times article on it. Uh, that, that department, which cost about 20 or cents per taxpayer per year, we got rid of in October of 2019. One of those departments that you wish we had in the... I, I, I would have put in 20 cents to have that department back in October, but whatever. At the local level, outside the state level, we have no idea what we're doing with our lockdown. If there were metrics where we said, we are shutting down, we are going to have a lockdown because we are worried about hospitals being overrun, because we are worried about the... Uh, more, we want to know uh, mortality rate. We want, and we want the ability to test people before we let them back out. So once a hospitals have are at X capacity, B we can test this many people per day. C we have an idea on mortality rate. Then we will consider reopening, and we will have these dates as dates that we will have. We, we will have these dates upon which we will make a decision based on this data. You don't even have to commit to making a decision. I'm not saying commit to a date where you reopen. Commit to a date where you say, on this date, we will look at the data and make a decision if it is, if it is here. But we don't even have that. We don't have, like, there's nothing. So in the absence of any data, you get panic in each direction. In one direction, you have people, you know, the pandemic people that think that this doesn't exist, blah, blah, blah. This was made up, New World Order, steal all the businesses, whatever. And on the other side, you have the people that think, Oh my God, it's so bad, everybody gonna die! And that stuff is just starting to tick me off. Because if, if you have actual endpoints, if you have metrics, if you say we will make a decision based on data, this is the data that we want, this is the date by which we want that data, and on this date, we will make a decision based on the data, then people would relax themselves. But I think the reason you have people not relaxing themselves is because you don't have that. And I understand if you don't have the data. I understand it's hard to test 8 million people. I understand that it's difficult to have information on, uh, on you know, hospital availability, occupancy, all that good stuff. I'm not asking you to have the data right now. I'm not asking you to make a decision on whether to reopen or, or at or what stages to reopen on what date. But can you at least decide what data you're using to make a decision and what you need to see from that data in order to make a decision? Because right now what it seems like, it seems like we are not sure, we are making, you know, we'll figure it out as we go, but we don't even know what we need. And that's where I think people are getting uh, panicky and agitated. Because again, if you said, we need, I'm just going to pull some numbers out of my ass here, because I'm not a medical expert, I fix MacBooks with water damage. But if you said, if you said, when hospitals are, have 50% occupancy, um, when we can test uh, 50,000 people a day, if mortality rate is under this number, then we will do phase one of reopening. That would make sense. But the problem here is that, you, and I don't, we could argue over what the numbers are. I don't even care about that. Me. But the fact that we don't have any of that even set is what makes this ridiculous to me. You need to, because it's, what's interesting, it's kind of like when it comes to war in the Middle East. Like, you know, people have said, what does, we don't even know what victory looks like. So if you simply said, we will leave Iraq, or we will leave Afghanistan, or we will leave you know with this country alone. When we have met these particular endpoints, then even the anti-war people could say, "Okay, fine, I'll go with you on this plan." However, if you say we're just going to stay here until eh, 
then that's where you have anti-war protesters start to lose their shit because it seems like you just never want to leave the Middle East. There needs to be a goal. You have to be shooting for a goal. Once that goal is reached, then you reopen. And we can decide on that date whether or not you've reached that goal. That's fine. And if we didn't reach that goal, whatever. But if you, but if you never know if the goal is going to be reached, then you're kind of fucked. I'm going to stop here for a moment because my bike is making a clickety-clackety sound and I would like to take a look at it. Oh. I gotta screw my kickstand in all the way when I get to work. I'm loose. No big deal. It's like if you're waiting for a... You know when you're waiting for a train, there's that little indicator that says when it's coming? It'll say like, you know, nine minutes until the next two train. When you have that, even if even if it's 99 degrees, even if there's kids crying next to you, even if there's people fighting on the tracks, like, you know, it sucks, but in nine minutes your train will come and everything will be fine. But when you don't have that and you've been waiting 20 or 30 minutes for the train, then you get antsy. It's like, is this train ever coming? Oh my God, am I going to have to walk? Because if you knew the train wasn't coming, you just get out and walk home. But if you don't know if the tra train is ever coming, then you wait 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, etc. And then you start to get people who get really, really antsy. Nice parking place, FedEx. Nice parking spot. Right turn signal. Oh, Jesus Christ. Another right turn signal. Left turn signal and go. truck in the middle of the street <laughs> stop trolling me what is this frogger jesus i remember when trucks used to stop on the side The other interesting thing is I keep hearing Cuomo say we'll work out the economy later, we'll work out the economy later, we want to save every human life, every human life, even one life. You know, if you wanted to save every life, there's a really easy way to do that. Take away all these gas-powered, four-legged, 2,000-pound things running around everywhere. I don't like when I hear people say that, because I value life, I really do. I value life. But I don't think any public policy has ever been set based on every single life. Because if you set that as the metric, it's, there's so many things in the world that you have to get rid of. But when he says, worry about economy later. Do landlords get freezes on their mortgages? Uh -huh. Do renters get freezes on their, on their rent? Like, my landlord offered to work something out with me where, like, I'll get some discount right now for loss of business, but they want it all back next year. Now, it's great. You know, I appreciate that they gave me a discount now. Okay, that's cool. But they want it all back next year. 
Now, my business is also based on other businesses operating because other businesses need to operate in order to have a requirement for any of their stuff. You know, if businesses are not operating, they no longer need the computer that they're giving me, which decreases business. So if I don't have that business, then how am I going to find that money to give the landlord? This is not an issue when, for me when you're talking about apartment rent and stuff like that, like one, two, or three K a month. But when you're in that $13,000 a month range, you, you really are paying out the ass for a space to the point where you need a line out the door in order to pay that rent. And if that line out the door goes away, you know, my landlord might be uh, finding themselves in the middle of an unpleasant conversation next year, I can say that. I'll leave it at that. But when Cuomo says we'll worry about this next year, it's like, are we going to worry about it next year or am I? Because something tells me that he doesn't have to worry about these types of things the same way that everybody else does. I just got my battery shut off. It's been doing this more and more often. I have to lower the amperage in the controller. This battery is about a year and a half old now, and it has seen all sorts of beating down and abuse. There we go. I used to have it at 60 amps, then I turned it to 55. Now even at 47 or 42, if I do full throttle, it will, without working my way up very slowly, it shuts off the battery. Probably got to cap it at 40 amps right now until I get another one. It did a good job for the last year and a half. I got a good year and a half out of this battery. EM3EV makes amazing batteries, by the way. Shout out to EM3EV.com. They make some really, really nice triangle packs. One thing I'm not going to screw with is putting together my own battery. Hell no. I do not need to put together my own battery. I can see that Reddit post right now. Right to repair it, battery advocate, sets himself on fire, assembling his own battery. Nope. Not giving Apple that PR win. <laughs> they individually fuse each cell, which I think is really cool. These road plates, I hate them. I slipped on one of those that had oil on them and got a concussion two years ago. They are my sworn enemy. One thing you may note is that I learned it's actually illegal to have those on the street without the traction on them. So they make those plates with traction marks. And most of the construction companies don't use them because they're cheaper. But it's actually illegal to have those. You gotta have the ones with the traction marks. It's comforting to see that still nobody uses them. Pastry shop. Pastries are essential. Okay. From. What is this cluster fuckery? Oh. Okay. Ambulance. Never mind. Uh, I thought it was a bunch of people parking in the street just because that's what people seem to do in New York. It's hard to tell. It gets hard to tell when there's an emergency or just people being jackasses. Right. Oh. Nice little New York City road there.
like a new building or an old building actually getting renovated over here. Pretty cool. can walk, why can't my bike go from? These lights are timed to drive you crazy on purpose, I swear. Vroom. Oh no, you're not changing on me. Hell no. Whoa, oh. arrived. This is something I could never do in the old store. Ready? One, two. Alright, see you all later.